and welcome to the Calgary's Secrets in Plain Sight podcast. This is episode one of four 15-minute long podcasts that will take you on a journey through Signal Hill, Inglewood, the Beltline, and Bridgeland Riverside to uncover the rich history that built these communities for us to enjoy today. I'm your host, Marissa Raghavin. Follow along by watching the visual aspects of the podcast, or simply plug in your headphones to listen in. Perhaps you're new to Calgary, just visiting, or have lived here all your life. Either way, I hope you enjoy learning more about this fascinating city that many call home. First off, I would like to honor the original caretakers of the land that the city of Calgary resides on. We acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksiga, Bigani, Ghana, the Sutuna, the Stony Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nations Region 3, and all the people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of southern Alberta. For this first episode, we're traveling to the southwest of Calgary, to a prominent location called Signal Hill. Large numbers made up of 16,000 stones are placed on the side of the hill, making it a hard historical landmark to miss. You can see it from the highway or from the sky above, or if you walk into the park yourself. Not many Calgarians know the true historical significance of these rocks. I was joined by Peter J. Boyle on Signal Hill to learn more about its rich history. All right, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> no problem at all. I know it's a bit of a trek to get up here, but it seems like it's quite busy. A lot of people like to bike. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, it's definitely a nice place to come visit if you've never been here before. I would highly recommend it. I think it's great that the way they integrate history and heritage into like bike trails and stuff so that people yeah. actually see it every day and it becomes part of their routine versus hidden away in a museum. Yeah, exactly. Anyone can come. It's, you don't have to pay anything to get here and you can just show up. Yeah. As we stood on the side of the hill, we could see many cyclists, people walking their dogs, and others touring the area. The air was smooth and warm. Although not as hot as it had been recently in Calgary, it still hovered around the high 20s for us that evening. Once on the hill, you get a great view of the surrounding residential area and shopping center, as well as a nice break from the fast-paced highway and busy city center. You can smell all the flowers that have been planted, and it's just a nice place with serene, calm nature around you. We began our interview with a few questions about Peter and his research. So Signal Hill in particular. So I've got a fairly strong background in military history um, over the years. And Signal Hill, I was always curious. It's always been here. I knew about it a little bit. And I started asking other historians, can you give me some more details about it? And there was always conflicting information. So the story didn't seem like it was complete. And so I started digging into it more and more. And I'm still trying to get the full story completed. But it's, uh, we have a lot more information than we did a few years ago. How long has this journey been for you then? Um, probably about three years of research. Um, not full time, obviously, but um, and COVID gave us a little bit of time on our hands to do some stuff. So probably about three years of, um, of one type of research or another. Signal Hill is quite noticeable because of its numbers and they're huge. You can see them from the highway. What really makes it a landmark that is important for Calgary as a city? This location, and just to the south of us, is um, where all the soldiers from Alberta trained before they went to the First World War. So whether you're from Edmonton, Red Deer, Lethbridge, um, and I'm sure I'm missing many cities, or Calgary, you came to Sarcy Camp. Sarcy Camp was the large um, military place where you trained, and then you got on a train and went to uh, Halifax, usually, or Quebec, and uh, sailed to England, and then joined a battalion in, uh, in France or, or Belgium. So it's a Every Albertan who went to war came through Sarcy Camp and the only real piece left of Sarcy Camp is, is the, the large numbers. So I think it's an incredibly important piece of history that's still here today. When the battalions were mobilized, they would have trained locally. So for example, in Edmonton, they would have come together, they would have done training at the armories, they would have learned drill and marksmanship. But then when it was time to go to England, when there was a, sort of the last little bit before they went over, they would come to Sarcy Camp and that's where they would do some more intensive training. Um, physical fitness, marksmanship. Okay. Um, they had a full trench system built down there so they learned how to fight in the trenches. Um, wow. Anything that was really that last push of hardcore training before they got on the, on the train to go overseas. So this wow. was where they would come. Everyone came at the last probably about six weeks of their, their training. 
Oh, cool. So the numbers on the hill you've mentioned, what do the numbers mean? Certainly. So in the First World War, um, all of the Canadian Expeditionary Force mobilized numbered battalions. So they started at number one and they went to number 260. Um, and each battalion would be about 900 soldiers. Um, there was also some um, additional supporting units, like there's artillery and there's service corps and engineers. But the core infantry battalions, the ones you see going over the top and attacking the enemy, there was 260 battalions during the First World War. So each numbered battalion, there's four numbers on the, on the hill behind us, um, each would have that number. So the soldiers commemorated their battalion, they were very proud of their battalion, by putting numbers um, on geographical features. So at the time of the First World War, there would have been about, we found about 30 different numbers that stretch from Signal Hill all the way down to basically where Casino is right now, um, representing all of these different units that went overseas. On the hill are the numbers 137, 113, 151, and 51. After the battalions were gone, the numbers were almost lost forever. However, a historian found them and through photos were able to recover the positions of the numbers. Over several years, the area became a historical landmark and the numbers made of stone were restored. Battalion Park officially opened in 1991. So the four numbers that exist here today are well representative of Alberta. So the 51st Battalion is from Edmonton, the 151st is from Red Deer, the 137th is from Calgary, and the 113th is from Lethbridge. So we have sort of northern Alberta to southern Alberta for all the battalions that did come through Camp RC, but a good representation here at uh, Signal Hill. They seem to be scattered quite nicely, but are they historically where they have always been? So um, the 113th Battalion is in its original position. The other three, which is the 51st Battalion, the 137th Battalion, and the 151st Battalion, were moved when they did the redevelopment of Signal Hill and placed very close to its original location. Not 100%, but um, if you look at air photos from right after the First World War, you'd have difficulty telling the difference. So. Oh, cool. I like that they tried to keep it as accurate as possible, yes. even though the infrastructure was building. And these were the only ones that were on this specific hill. There were many more that were further south. So no, unfortunately, all the other numbers were removed or destroyed with the expansion of the community, whether that was Sarsi Trail, whether it was the community slightly to the east of there, and in particular, the expansion of um, Sarsi Camp in the 1950s. They built a, a number of buildings and expansions for um, the army units posted there, and those stones vanished. Um, we did, we have aerial photos, and we can see when they were there and when they were gone, and they all seem to basically leave in the late 1950s, which is quite unfortunate. One of the most incredible aspects of the numbers on the hill is how they came to be, something many don't think about. These rocks weren't there to begin with. They had to be brought. Um, so they're... <laughs> The numbers are made up of stones. Most of the stones came from the river valley. The Elbow River is to our south. The conventional story is that the soldiers were very proud of their battalions and they would come up here on their time off and build these great numbers. The reality of it was when the soldiers would get into trouble, the sergeants would say, pick up a stone and run up the hill. <laughs> and so More of a punishment then. <laughs> uh, suddenly there were these stones being uh, collected on the hills and the soldiers then decided to do something with them. But uh, it was um, not a punishment, but encouragement for uh, making sure you're doing your, your tasks correctly. <laughs> I noticed all the stones were painted. Were they always painted or is that something new? Yeah, so they were always painted. Um, the soldiers were very proud of their units and they wanted the numbers to stand out so that you could see them from the camp far away. Um, so they were painted at the time. After the war, many of the veterans continued to come here and paint them. And there's pictures of them when Signal Hill was just a, um, a, a clearing and parked there with their station wagons and gallons of paint and, and painting the stones every summer just to, to keep them fresh. So the netting that they have then, would they have had that back in then? Or is that, no. that's more just to keep them safe? Then? That's modern and keep people from messing around with them. And yeah, that's especially you could see them erode away if there was not some... some yeah, you can, it's a little bit more prominent too with, yes. with that. Now, is this something that would happen all across Canada or is it just unique to Alberta that we have these numbers? So stone art was um, quite a custom of the British Army, and you would have seen in a camp um, the pathways lined with white stones, flagpoles with circles with white stones, um, cap badges done with stones and plants. There was always sort of a, a way of doing that. I don't know of any others quite as prominent of this in Canada, but rock art was quite common amongst the soldiers in the day. One thing about being on the hill that really gives you a moment of pause is the thought of the people behind the numbers. They trained rigorously to serve our country. What kind of training would the military personnel who 
have been here endure? Sure. So during the First World War, when Camp Start C was here, um, most of the training would have been physical in nature. Um, whether that was route marches or running, they would have done um, training inside a trench, quite elaborate trench systems that were down in Sarsi camp. Um, lots of marksmanship, making sure they were qualified in their rifles and, and knowing how to shoot. And any of that other soldier type things, whether it was preparing, learning how to use your gas mask, um, all those sort of things they're gonna need in the front. Are there any military troops still training in this area? Um, so, Sarsi camp was still in use until the late 1990s. So it was used the First World War, the Second World War, and then um, there was a brigade group stationed in Calgary. In the 1997-98, that moved to Edmonton. So from the full-time regular force soldiers, there's um, no large footprint anymore using that area. That being said, there are quite a few reserve units based here in Calgary. They wouldn't use that land. It's been turned back to the Indigenous people, but there are military training units here in Calgary. If you, the listener, ever get a chance to visit Battalion Park in Signal Hill, I highly recommend it. Not only was it a wonderful experience, but it's a beautiful space to reflect on the country that we have and how we got to where we are today. I encourage you to take time out of your day to visit Signal Hill and Battalion Park and wear your walking shoes or bring your bike or bring your dog and go for a walk up the hill, visit the monuments, reflect on all the people that helped you get to where you are today and how Canada came to be what it is. I hope that you go all the way up the stairs. If you have your bike, you can even use the bike ramp. Go all the way up to the top of the stairs and have a moment of reflection. There's these beautiful flowers and wonderful landscaping at the top there. You can smell those flowers, look at the monuments, see the beautiful signage. There's lots of information around on Signal Hill and Battalion Park. And I hope you take a moment to reflect on who you are and how you got to where you are today and your ability to sit at the top of this hill in a peaceful, calm moment. I myself had a moment to sit there and reflect in the peace and tranquility. I loved hearing the flags flow back and forth in the wind. Everyone who comes to the hill is so friendly and so kind. And I can tell that there's a sense of understanding. When you're up here on the hill, you are so close. You can see every single rock and all the painting and all the effort that came to put these rocks right where they are now. Once you've made it down from the hill, and you've done the, all those steps again. It's a very good exercise. You get to the bottom, and if you keep going all the way around the corner, you'll even find a poppy field. And that poppy field is a beautiful place to reflect as well. Sit and listen to the trees with the wind flowing through them, and even make your way over to the poppy field and hear the bees buzzing away. I want to leave you with the last thought that Peter left me with after his interview. So I think the thing to remember, we talk about the First World War and we talk about the thousands of soldiers who died. And I think it's important to remember that these were people. They were fathers, they were sons, they lived on the streets in our neighborhoods. And so when you look at these numbers, remember that there's people behind them. There were soldiers who went overseas and died and you should just not think of the rocks, but think of the people in, in the community. Don't just think of the rocks, but think of the people in the community. What a beautiful thought to end this podcast. I want to give a special thank you to Peter J. Boyle, as well as all you listeners out there. Thank you for taking the time to learn a bit more about Calgary and Signal Hill. I hope you join me next time where we talk about Calgary's oldest community, Inglewood. I look forward to it.